Hi, so eBean's got uh, a new feature where an entity can be based on a view. So we've added at view. And with this video, I'm just going to look at two of the issues involved with that, which is L2 caching and DDL. So firstly, with L2 caching, if, if you're not going to use L2 caching, then you can pretty much just specify the view and the name of the view that the entity is based on. But if you uh, are going to use L2 caching, so in this case I'm going to enable caching and enable query cache, then we should additionally specify the tables that the view is dependent on. So for example, if I have changes to my order table, then that will invalidate the, the query cache for this entity. So that's pretty much all there is to, to worry about in terms of caching. Uh, if you're going to use L2 caching with these entities, you need to also specify the dependent tables. The second aspect is DDL handling, and that's got two areas. One is the, the create all and migrations. So when we base an entity on a view, what we need to do is define an extra DDL XML document. And that uh, gives us the ability to specify DDL scripts. And in this case, the, the DDL script can contain any DDL, but for this example, we're just going to have our view. So these scripts end up in two places. One is after the create all DDLs run, these scripts are run. And secondly, for database migrations, these become repeatable migrations. So we'll have a look at that. So I've defined a script and I've given a name order views and that's got some DDL in it which happens to create our view. So when I run my tests in H2, for example, I'm going to run the create all SQL and then after that we'll see an extra, extra DDL is executed, which is those two statements here. And then in my test, I'm, I'm just running a query against my view. And if I see I've got my query against my order totals entity, and that means that my from clause is just my, my view here. So that's um, that means that basically I can use this view running tests against H2 as you'd expect and hope. Now, secondly, this DDL ends up as a repeatable migration. So what that means is that, so I've run some migrations here, um, and I've got a migration model and my, my DDL scripts, which is my create table and my adding some columns. I've also got this R script, which is a repeatable script, and it's got a, a name of order views. So repeatable scripts don't have a version per se, they're executed after all of the migrations and they're executed if the migration hasn't been run or if its content changes. So there's a checksum on the content and if the content checksum is different, then the migration is, is run. So the only thing uh, to left to do is to actually run the migrations and show you a change. So if I go apply DB migration. So I haven't run this before, so this will um, execute the initial, um, execute add foos, and then run my repeatable migration, which is to create the view. So if I look at my database and refresh that, expand, I can see now my view with my columns, and I can see my tables. And if I look at my migration table, I can see I've run the, the version migrations, 1011, and I've run the repeatable migration of order views. Now, uh, let's, let's just do a quick change and see how that goes. So what we're going to do is, well, let's, let's change customer, add some bar columns. And let's change our extra DDL some array. Let's just create a, another column. So now let's, what do we do? Add some bars, right? So have we got there? Yeah, okay. Add bars. Um, 
So let's generate a migration. So when we generate our next migration, we've got our you know add bars migration change, but we've also it's written or overwritten the repeatable order views. So this will have our slightly different content in it now, and so its MD5 will change. So if we run our um, run our app with the migrations, we'll see that uh, it ran two migrations, the add bars and the, the order views. Now if we looked in our DB migration table, actually it's already there, 1.2 add bars and order views. If we, um, now we've got our new column here, ship total to. So, yep, that's that's um, that's basically it for views and repeatable migrations. So, just to, to clarify again, we've got an entity. It can use an at view to be based on a view. If we're using L2 caching, then we also should specify the dependent tables. In terms of the DDL, we specify the DDL in extra DDL XML. And this DDL will now be executed in two different places. It'll be executed as part of, um, a, a created as a, as a migration for repeatable migrations. And then when we run our one hour, um, our test in say H2 or whatever, when it, after the create all DDL, the extra all DDL is, is also executed. So that's how it all works. Cheers.